Officers were essentially ambushed by the suspect, and the result was him murdering one of our community's police officers. Sacramento police gave us more information about what officers went through Wednesday night when Officer Tara O'Sullivan was killed. It all started with a domestic disturbance call just before noon. Police are now telling us the front door of that house on Redwood Avenue was barricaded when Officer O'Sullivan and her partner showed up. They were there to help a woman get her belongings from the suspect's house. We still don't know the exact relationship between the suspect and that woman. Officer O'Sullivan was shot while her partner approached the detached garage behind the house. Police say she had no chance of surviving her wounds. Police say the suspect had four weapons he used during the shooting. Two assault rifles, a handgun, and a shotgun. Investigators later found more weapons inside the garage and the house next door. They say all those weapons belong to the suspect. Sacramento police also shared body cam footage from the night Officer O'Sullivan was shot and killed. Police held a news conference late last night where they showed the entire video. We're going to play you a clip of it, but we want to warn you, it's hard to watch. You hear a lot of gunshots, but you're not going to see anything graphic. Take a look. Adele, police department. If you're in here, let me know. You're not in trouble, dude. It's hard to see. You can watch the full two minute video on our website, abc10.com. Police say they wanted to share that video to keep the community informed during this tragedy. And something else to keep in mind that body camera video is from just after six o'clock. And police say the suspect kept firing at officers for hours after that. He didn't surrender until around two o'clock in the morning. And of course, this video has stirred a lot of emotions for many of you, but few really understand what it's like during such intense moments. We wanted to get a better idea of what an officer goes through when an event like this is unfolding. ABC 10's Daniela Pardo talked to a local officer. I'm a dad. Uh, I'm a reserve police officer in my local community. I'm a security consultant. Hector Alvarez is a volunteer officer with Bolson PD. He sat down with us to break down the intense moments shown in the body cam video that Officer Tara O'Sullivan's partner was wearing when she was killed. You know, I don't know what's going through his head, and I can only imagine that it's um, it's that it's that one thing that none of us want to happen, and it's like it's happening. We've heard things about. You know, why did it take so long and, and people question and, and I don't I don't think anybody can remotely fathom the uh, the desire to get to help your partner when something's going on. And so knowing that they were stuck and, and not able to get there for as long as they were, uh, it, it uh, is a painful thing to consider that they went through. How loud is it when you're actually there? It, it's almost deafening loud. Um, you know, this particular round is faster, is smaller. Um, and it, it was it was nonstop, and you you can hear the different percussions. You can hear you can hear the different guns. We always hear people say things like, "Well, it's what we signed up for." A lot of, if not most, people got into law enforcement to help people, and knowing that you're in a position where you can't help is really tough. If we think about the underlining call, um, this was a woman who was afraid of the partner that she had, and so asked for help just to get her stuff. Um, again, it was a typical call until it wasn't. We're there to protect everybody. And uh, it's rough. You know, this one, this one stings because she was, she's what we all wanted. You know, she's, she's the officer that we all wanted. And she was taken far too, far too soon. As for the suspect, Adele Ramos, he's expected in court on Monday. And he's charged with murder and attempted murder of another police officer. 
He's also facing illegal weapons charges and special circumstances that would allow authorities to seek the death penalty. But that decision is months away, and Governor Newsom also put a stop on executions in California. Our Madison Meyer sat down with senior chaplain Mindy Russell. She spends time with officers and deputies during their brightest and their darkest moments. Her message, if this makes you feel something, outraged, do something. Being able to share about the fact that in the last couple of days, it's been a whirlwind, and, in, and at the same time, it's been so long. Because at this time, of another officer murdered executed. We can't not soften those words and should not. Our community needs to hear how harsh that was because she was ambushed. Chaplain like Mindy Russell is sharing the harsh week. truth about what happened to Officer Tara O'Sullivan. It's a reality happening far too often. When we talk about they sign up for the risk to protect others, that's noble. That's why we call them heroes every day. But they didn't sign up and they didn't agree to get killed to do this job. Just six months ago, Davis police officer Natalie Corona was ambushed. And nine months ago, Deputy Mark Stasiuk killed in the line of duty. I wish that they had had a, a, a bigger break, uh, more of a time to breathe. But it just seems like it's getting closer. Um, the assaults are more and I, I, I think what I'm hearing from the community is we've got to do something. As a chaplain, Mindy was there the night O'Sullivan died. She's been praying with officers, guiding them through their darkest hour. I asked about the officers who were with O'Sullivan that night, the officers who tried to rescue her but couldn't for 45 minutes. Don't get stuck on that. Let you get to a point that you have peace with that. Those officers did everything they can. The helicopter was flying around her the whole time. And no matter how long she was able to hear, she heard she was being protected by the helicopter. So we just can't get stuck there. Grieve right. Good grief is healthy. Bad grief gets you stuck. Mindy says every minute that went by with help on the way, O'Sullivan was not alone. When God says, I will never leave you, she was not alone. And maybe we didn't see what was happening in the supernatural, but I believe until God said, let's come, come home to me. Mindy says there's no moving on from this. There's only moving forward. We're crushed with sadness, but let's not get stuck with that. Let's not get stuck with anger. Let's not get stuck with frustration or feeling overwhelmed. Let's take this and reframe it with our, the purpose of why we do what we do, because we can't do anything less. So a lot of you have been reaching out on Facebook, sharing your thoughts and prayers for the O'Sullivan family and asking what you can do to help. The only official memorial fund is with the CAHP Credit Union. You can go to their website or mail a donation and you also have that information on our website, abc10.com. And if you want to pay your respects to Officer O'Sullivan, her alma mater, Sac State, is holding a memorial tomorrow night at 8 at the Outdoor Studio Theater. And we just learned from Sacramento Police that Officer Tara O'Sullivan will be honored at a memorial service on Thursday, June 27th at 10 a.m. It'll be at Bayside Church Adventure Campus in Roseville. Head to abc10.com to watch our extended interviews with Chief Han and to get the latest updates on this case.